Hi everybody. I stopped at a yard sale over the weekend and I bought this old digital clock radio from the 1980s. It's a General Electric 7-4634 and I really didn't need it at all but I wanted to have a little fun with it. After all it only cost 50 cents and what I want to do is convert it from 12 hour mode as you would typically find on these things into 24 hour mode and that's a project I've done before on a different much smaller digital clock uh, without the radio and um, it's it's really just a single IC in here controlling the the uh, the LED clock display is very typical on these old digital alarm clocks either an LM8560 or a TMS3450 um, typically are the the two identical um, part numbers for the uh, these ICs that you would typically find in these things and they have 12 and 24 hour mode selection pin and it's always going to be 12 hour mode selection pin pulled high or pulled low or whatever whatever the logic level is for these things and I just want to open it up flip it and see if we can get 24 hour mode um, for this thing and I'll just go ahead and say that I already have had this thing opened up. I cleaned it out real good, cleaned all the dust off the top and off the inside, and um, had to play with the colon. Got the colon flashing one cycle per second because there's a colon flashing output on the IC in here. And um, also the 24-hour mode at, on this particular LED display is not going to work but I think I might be able to replace the display with a different one and I'll show you more about that right now. So here's the inside of that GE clock plainly split up here between clock side and radio side. By the way the the radio tuning indicator really nice design I think just with that red plastic bar going back and forth a lot more mechanically simple than the um, the other configuration with a, a string going on a bunch of pull leaves that I've seen in many old school radios with the, the tuning capacitor like this. Anyway, let's get the speaker out of the way and flip this over. And well first, right there's the chip, the LM8560. And then there's all the, the pins or the switches right here. Just got the the metal reed touches down on the the uh, jumper wires down there. Just a plain ordinary single sided circuit board. There's the the bodge that I did for the colon. This wire used to go up here to that solder joint right there. That's on a resistor um, tied to the high side, the positive side of the power supply. And um, so I just took it off there from steady state put it on the the flashing colon output from the IC and so the colon flashes one cycle per second and um, then there's these pins over here or these holes and traces so pin 28 that's this one right here that's the 12 and 24 hour mode select and then there's pin 26 that's the 50 60 Hertz select and both of those used to have a couple of jumper wires going up here to uh, ground or the negative side of the power supply and totally unnecessary because these things already have um, pull down resistors built into the IC but the the uh, I don't know why but they put them put the jumpers in there anyway so what I just want to do is hook up pin 28 that's the 24 hour mode select pull that high up here to uh, the high side of the, the power supply and that'll make it 24 hour mode but it's not got, not quite going to work because there's some LEDs in here that are not populated and I'll show you that next. Now on the top side of the board it even has this convenient little note J20, 22 and 21 60 hertz, 50 hertz and 12 hour and so there's the uh, J20 from those two holes or from this hole or to that hole is J22 and then there's J21 between those two holes that was in there before for 12 hour mode no mention of 24 on this note but I just hooked up jumper from here or there 
J23 you can just about see down there and let's plug it in and we'll see what the problem is real nice flashing 000 instead of 1200 and let me hit the the hour button here and there we go once I go up to 20 hours you can see it just has the uh, the segment B of the two digit and nothing else because it only needs segment B and segment C for the one and 12 hour mode and that's it the AM indicator comes on though um, when it reaches the uh, the two position and then goes back off when it's in uh, zero or one and um, so yeah that's big problem and I already had a peek under the plastic here the um, it's, it's really just LEDs mounted on this circuit board and then there's this plastic housing that's put all around them and then the uh, the, the plastic the red plastic layer put on top of that it's kind of a cheap construction but also very very common in just about any kind of digital clock radio that you you find from any time period almost but they had some further cost um, restrictions by just populating the two LEDs for the one and nothing for the two so I'm gonna have to replace this whole thing and I think I just might have just a, a good another clock radio right there that might actually have it so this thing is the Magnavox model AJ3040 clock radio and I actually have two of them I don't remember how I got them I think me and my brother must have got the two of them for Christmas one year and somehow I ended up with both of them anyway I got one of them torn apart already um, and kind of like the same construction except we got two different circuit boards here for the radio and for the clock very convenient you can see another cost reduction right here is that they didn't even bother with the colon at all this one haven't even opened yet clearly no colon and um, so that'll be that'll be an easy fix the colon connection on the display is actually the last one all the way on the right and I'll show a pinout of all the LEDs in here as well later on I also have a printout of a web page here the 24-hour clock page which I printed out 11 years ago October of 2004 from isitcrunchy.com and I checked this thing is no longer in existence I've got no idea where this information came from or who wrote it just some guy named crunchy last updated in November of 97 really really old early internet stuff right here anyway this crunchy guy lays out a very detailed step-by-step -step instruction and some other helpful hints and tidbits of things that you can do with this particular clock radio the Magnavox um, AJ3040 now at the time back in 2004 if I actually knew that this clock was the same as that clock or that clock I don't really remember I don't know why I didn't actually um, go ahead and convert these things into 24 hour at the time I think I might have assumed that these things were um, since they're somewhat newer than something like this that maybe they had a, a chip on board that would be totally impossible to reverse engineer and modify um, but somehow I just don't think I realized that these were the same clock that I actually had in my possession the AJ3040 that this guy talks about or maybe it could just be that at the time I didn't have a Torx screwdriver because there's this and a bunch of others that I had to take out of that to open it up and uh, but hey I've got one now I think at the time back in 2004 I didn't even realize that this kind of screw would have been called Torx this is you know real for me real early stuff I was just fresh out of college with my bachelor's degree so here's the IC in the Magnavox radio got another LM8560 functional the equivalent to the Texas Instruments TMS 3450 and right here is pin 28 follow that trace right down here to this pad 
with the open space available for a jumper to go from there to the positive side of the supply. Again, we got another jumper space here for the 5060 Hertz select. And also, according to, to uh, Mr. Crunchy, I'm going to have to put another jumper between these two pads because these pins right here, they get hooked up to the, uh, the two, two segments, I suppose A, C, D, and E. That's where those pins are going to go in the, uh, the LED uh, display up there. And hopefully we can get a two to actually be displayed on this thing. Okay, there's the two jumpers I soldered in. This one and that one, the two purple wires there. Just put them on the bottom, even though there are holes for jumper to be mounted on the top of the board. I was lazy about it. And um, if this works, if this display actually does have the uh, the twos digit on there, then I'm gonna just take it out of this thing and put it into the General Electric radio. And one other interesting point about this radio is the tuning indicator right here. Let me put the circuit board back down. So I'm turning the, the knob over here on the side and it's just got this plastic ribbon that's down inside the channel of the, uh, the plastic case right here. Just move that back and forth like that. Pull this up and you can see that the plastic ribbon is down in here. And there's the, the thumb, the finger wheel, just with that little hole. And that just moves the ribbon back and forth. Another really elegant design, except I know from extensive experience that this is totally crap. First of all, this thing is so wide, it's very not precise uh, with the actual tuning frequency, and you can barely see it. I guess, yeah, I, I guess it's okay in some circumstances. The camera certainly makes it out to look very nice, but in in most cases, especially in a dark bedroom, it's really, really hard to see. All right, let's plug it in. And there we go. We got the zeros. Put it in time set mode and uh, make the hours go. There we go. Those LEDs are populated onto the PCB. That's real nice. Sweet. Oh, I guess that's just the, uh, the radio, the alarm coming in on the clock radio. Where's the snooze button? There it is. So there it is. That's how you make 24 hour time on this particular Magnavox clock radio. Thank you, Mr. Crunchy, for detailed instructions and all that, whoever you are. But now, now that I know that's a good display, I'm going to be moving it over to that one. Very arduous task now of unsoldering and resoldering all the connections on the LED display. Here's the, the pinout that I made for myself many years ago. And I'll put some, some still photos of this plus, plus these instructions. I'll put that all at the end of the video so you can uh, read all the details if you want. Okay, got the Magnavox LED display soldered into the old clock radio. Here's the original one. This is the only thing I could find inside that actually had a date code I could decipher. So we're looking at 1991 is when this was thing when this thing was made in the early 90s, whereas my original estimate was the 80s. And the other display here from the Magnavox, we're looking at 1998. Not too much of a difference. It's the LTC, that's light on company 637D1P and I found a data sheet for that. So there's light on electronics incorporated. There's the part number and there's the the layout and the pinout and all that. Real real nice. I think this pinout myself I must have I must have reverse engineered the uh, uh, a display that I took apart many many years ago and that's probably how I got this layout this is all the the uh, the cathode and the anode connections for each segment as they appear on the display 
here's a, a different way to look at it with all the individual diodes and then their connections to the pins also um, the pin numbering here is different from what I did I just totally ignored these blank spaces and I went from 1 to 24 but the convention that I now know these days is to go from 1 to 30 count all the holes whether there's a copper trace there whether there's a connection or not now let's see if it works all right we got the zeros let me hit the hour button here and go up and there we go we got the 20 20 zero, zero, the AM indicator right here and it is an AM indicator not a PM indicator as this one has right here PM the designers at GE preferred to have the AM dot showing up there anyway I don't know about that maybe I'll let it go maybe I'll disconnect it if I can and that's exactly what I did I just gouged out uh, the trace right here going to pin 5 of the LED display hooked up to the same couple of pins that go to the uh, the number 2 segments in the hours position and uh, let's flip that up there we go the AM LED does not turn on anymore one more hack I decided to do with this clock and that is to put this little toggle switch right down here on the bottom underneath where the LED display would go and that's just tied to the 50 60 Hertz selection pin and pulling it high when I flip the switch let's find out what happens there and now it's flashing a little bit faster and the colon flashes along with that of course flashing 120% uh, faster than normal and that would that would basically that means that this is going to count six hours um, in five hours of real time or this will go through a full 24 hour cycle in only 20 hours of real time and there it is one complete digital clock radio hack there's the the speed selector switch down there and it's I just put it down there to uh, so I can play around with it myself I want to do an experiment and see if this has any effect at possibly waking me up earlier because I might put it at the on the 50 Hertz uh, position which will make the clock run faster but not too fast just a little bit faster so it might wake me up an hour earlier but in you know my early morning state I'm all dazed and confused I might actually think it really is the time that this thing displays but it's not um, I don't know we'll see how that works anyway there's an interesting feature with this with this thing and w or rather with the with the IC in here anyway the LM8560 has these features built in but some clock radios don't have the ability to take advantage of it the Magnavox included this one however if you push the sleep button the radio comes on of course but push sleep and wake together then it displays the last digit of the minutes and the seconds after that and then if you pushed hours you can actually reset the hours to zero and uh, yeah, I guess um, after after 30 seconds it'll round up. Before 30 seconds it'll round down to the previous minute. And it's also possible to do it without the music. Just push the snooze button first, hold it in, and then sleep and wake simultaneously. And we can bring the, the minute and second display up. And push the hour button again. And there we go. We step up to the next minute. But if I hit this now... See, yeah, it resets back down to zero if it's less than 30, I suppose. All right, so that's my 24-hour clock radio hack. Let's see where it stands right now. We can see it switch over to zero, 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 zero. So there's the minute seconds, and just let go of the buttons. Now it's hours, minutes. It's all there. There's the seconds counting again. Really nice. I really like this thing. I'm going to put this by my bedside and try it out. By the way, the uh, the 50-60 hertz thing, I always 
wondered what it would be like to to do a prank on somebody if you actually have if you know of somebody who still uses something like this to wake up in the morning rather than using a, a cell phone or an iPad or something as with the alarm clock on there maybe you could open this up and and hack the uh, the the thing in there hack the IC to see if you can get it to go on on 50 Hertz mode rather than 60 Hertz and they'll the the person will probably not even notice it for quite a few days or at least they'll be confused and wonder what the heck is wrong with their clock and it'll probably be a very anticlimactic uh, sort of prank to play on somebody but um, I always wondered what that would be like as for the Magnavox clock radios well this one I'm still gonna keep that keep it just like this because this display I might need that for another clock radio sometime in the future if I wanna put a good 24 hour display on something else and this one well it's got a the LM8560 IC is still in there the the whole clock itself might come in handy for some other display maybe I'll make my own custom LED or incandescent light bulb or some kind of clock display like that I got all kinds of crazy clock ideas that I'll probably never get around to but that might come in handy as for the LM8560 in here, as to whether or not it's obsolete, I don't know. I didn't check. I also don't know if you can just walk into a Walmart and buy a cheap clock radio and find something in here that you can actually hack to a 24-hour mode. I don't know if that's feasible with, with modern-day consumer electronics, but back in the old days... Uh, this thing made in 97, 98 perhaps. As a matter of fact, the, uh, yeah, the, there's an AM FM IC on here. Phillips part number TEA5713 with the date code of 9817. So this would have been made 1998. And again, I don't know if you can actually get something like this anymore. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you learned something. Now, as promised, some still photos of these things.